I think when most of us are actually going through those things, they're really not funny at all. It's not funny, is it? Hey guys, Tessie Faye here. How is it going? For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Tisteem and I make YouTube videos about my life, moving into adulthood, and generally just society and culture as a whole. Something that has been on my mind as of late is the ways that generational trauma shows up in my life and in the lives of people like me. For those of you who are like, what is she saying? I will explain to you what generational trauma is. Basically, it refers to the transmission of trauma or the negative effects of traumatic events from one generation to the next. And this happens when a person goes through something traumatic and then develops coping mechanisms, behaviors, or beliefs, and then passes on the psychological and emotional consequences of that traumatic event to their children or future generations. If you're still confused about what generational trauma is, I'm going to get into it in this video so you can stick around. But before I do that, I just want to take a little quick sidestep. I do want to let you know that I am Pakistan. Americans. So this video is going to be from the perspective of someone who is from the subcontinent and immigrated as a wee little child uh, to the U.S. So just keep that in mind. That's the flavor of the day. Mm -hmm. So what generational trauma would look like for someone like me would be the ways that colonization, partition, famine, war. Did you know South Asians were physically altered by British colonialism? Dr. Mubin Sayed explains how. South Asians are starvation adapted due to having to survive at least 31 major famines, especially during the 18th and 19th centuries, along with chronic undernourishment. The things that my ancestors survived and also how the immigration experience has affected me mentally and genetically and how that will get passed on to future generations. Although I'm probably going to talk about this video more in relation to South Asians or immigrants, I do want to say that this is really applicable to anybody. Generational trauma is not just about immigrants or people from certain regions of the world. This is something like every human being has in their family history. So I'm just throwing that out there. Now that I've talked a little bit about what it is, I want to get into the meat of the video. I want to talk about why I think that generational trauma holds people back in life. And please note that these are mostly just my opinions based on my life experience, what I've seen, and just minimal research that I've done, as well as the media I consume. I also know that these are fields of study that are still relatively new. Just throwing that out there as well. I think one of the reasons that generational trauma holds people back is because they're unaware of it and its impact. I think not having knowledge about something can be good in some instances, like ignorance really is bliss in certain situations because life is hard and you're just gonna like lose your mind if you think about all the difficult things all the time. But when it comes to something like generational trauma, if that's something that you don't understand or even know exists, you can't address it on an individual level. Why do you think you might be so depressed? Why do you think you might be so anxious? When did that start? Has it always been there? And so when people say, yeah, I feel like I've always been anxious, I've always been kind of depressed, and my mood has always been sort of irritable ever since I was a little child, then the lights got to go off in your brain. You got to think, oh, I wonder what happened before they were even born. I wonder what happened with their parents. And something that I've seen on the internet, especially on the brown comedy side of things, probably even in a lot of older videos of mine, brown parents are the strongest, most amazing, most wonderful, um, hardworking people out there. They build American soil from the American dream that was in the mind of Thomas Jefferson when he it's pretty common to see us making fun of getting beat by our parents. I wasn't beat by my parents, I'm just saying. Or, you know, parents being very concerned with our performance in school and kind of like this strict and cold upbringing that some of us poke fun at. I think the comedy aspect of it is how we cope with it. But I think when some of us, or most of us, I think when most of us are actually going through those things, they're really not funny at all. It's not funny, is it? I think the comedy thing is a way that we hold a mirror up to society, but maybe that's just how we deal. I think the problem is when we accept these things as our culture and we normalize them, we're pretty likely to continue them and not break the cycles for the next generation. I found that if we, if we ignore the past, it can come back to haunt us. But if we explore it, we don't have to repeat it we can break these destructive patterns. I think even if people have some understanding of it, I don't think they want to acknowledge it because 
it can be mistaken for a sign of weakness. At least as an immigrant, you, know, you have to be tough to make it in a country that is not your own. It is not an easy experience. There's no room for really being too vulnerable. You know, it's about survival. It's not really conducive to wear your heart on your sleeve. It's, it's more about how do I show my teeth, which is a sad reality. But I, I watched this amazing show, which was based on a book called Pachinko. And it's a story about a Korean immigrant family across four generations. If you are someone who struggles with identity or culture, like that is such an amazing show. So I saw an interview of the author of Pachinko and uh, I found it really interesting. She talks about how she used to see people as a victim. And I used to believe that they were victims. And then I met so many of them who are descendants and I realized, no, they're incredibly fierce and intelligent and incredibly adaptive. And I really like what she said about that. Like, I don't think that we're victims and I don't think that if we talk about mental health, that makes us weak. I think that if we see it as a sign of weakness, it creates a stigma around issues and it just creates this block that will not allow us to move forward. There's actually a study done in the UK that showed that South Asian immigrants experience high rates of mental health disorders, but that many times it goes unaddressed. So that leads me into my next point, and that is that I think that people are held back by generational trauma because you're holding all this unnecessary baggage. I think there are probably things that people in your family history developed that were necessary to get them to where they are or where they needed to be to survive. But from an immigrant perspective, there's a big pressure to succeed, to be the best, because that's the only way that we will be accepted in society. It's like we have to prove why we deserve to be here. <laughs> So I don't know if any of you guys have watched the Disney movie Encanto, but the grandmother in that movie, um, she's the matriarch and she shows everyone tough love. She's, she's a tough cookie. So throughout the movie, she puts impossible expectations on the children. I will never be good enough for you. And as you watch the movie, you realize it's because she had to flee from her home. She lost a loved one. So that toughness that she needed to survive those events, she was using on her family, but it didn't build them up. It didn't help them. It didn't make them like these strong survivors. It actually broke them. It broke their spirit because that's not what they needed. Carrying these things through our life weighs us down. These things that we don't need. It's like a heavy suitcase. You're overpacked. You have all these things that you don't need on this luggage that you have to lug around and it's just a big nuisance on this journey on this trip through life life would be so much better if we just packed light maybe the planet would be okay if we did that there's also another series that i watched on netflix while i was in istanbul although you can watch it in the u.s as well it's called another self and the show features these three main characters who throughout the show realize that their difficulties in their family history are showing up in their life in the here and now i also highly recommend that show the characters in that show make the link between their family history and the things that they're feeling and the pain that they have in their present lives and spoiler alert with the help of others and each other, they're able to free themselves and break the cycles. Which gets me to my next point. And another reason why I think that generational trauma holds people back is because it's a tangled web. It's not just about individuals. It actually exists on higher levels because we're all connected. So it's not just your family history. There's institutional and systemic generational trauma as well. There's things that we can collectively experience as a whole, which I think I've mentioned some examples in the beginning of this video, but something that's maybe more relatable to this time that we're living in is the pandemic that we all experience collectively. I think that that is going to be something that is going to change the way that we are and our children and the future children. A growing body of work suggests that trauma is something that we pass down to future generations. And I think that what we collectively experienced with the COVID-19 pandemic was a form of trauma. But yeah, just speaking from my own life experience and as an adult, I, I can now see the cycles that my own parents have broken to get me to where I am. And there will likely be cycles that I break to get the future generations to where they need to go. I think that the further that we're able to go in our life in breaking these cycles, the better the starting line is for others. So this was some heavy stuff. And I do want to say that I don't think that there's a quick fix for any of this. I just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit because it's been something that I've been thinking about. I think that it's a lifelong journey. It's not going to happen overnight. But for most people, I think that things that could help in breaking these cycles are addressing your mental health and your physical health 
health and your emotional well-being. So the things that seem stupid or like, oh, oh my God, that's for white people. No, you know, seek therapy, join support groups, take care of your emotional and physical well-being. You know, you should seek out cultural resources and education and try your best to build a strong network of support. You should have good people around you. And if you don't, but yeah, that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and feelings on the ways that generational trauma have an impact and, you know, this idea of breaking cycles. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, Tazzy Faye, out. Bye. Bye bye. I'm hungry. Mm -hmm.